we are going to continue with the third part in this series where we will model the horns of this rhinoceros. But we're first going to look at some tools that a user will normally want to utilize to make small or large adjustments to their mesh at this stage of the process. In the previous video, you saw that we were able to click to add new loops to our preview mesh using the swept in generator tool. However, you can just as easily add or slide edge loops once you have applied the mesh, which adds it to a polygroup layer. Let's start by going to the tweak section. If I wanted to delete edges or entire edge loops, I could use the delete edges tool. I could delete one edge at a time or hold down the control key and you'll see it highlighted. Then you can click on it to remove an entire edge loop. I'll undo. If I want to adjust the position of any of the edge loops, I can easily do that with the slide edges tool. I'll hold down the control key to slide and I'll continue doing that for a few of these other loops. When I begin sculpting, it might be somewhat beneficial to have the topology flowing along with large contours, such as these deep skin folds, but with voxels and the triangulated geometry and surface mode, it's not much of an issue, if any. However, if this model has to be animated in the end, then that's a different story. Therefore, we may want to go ahead and adjust our topology now for that very purpose, knowing that this base mesh will eventually be our target mesh for baking. With that said, let's get started. The first thing I want to do is go to Select Mode. It's not really a tool. It's more of a geometry editing mode. In 3D Coat, you have a lot of tools that allow you to generate new geometry, and then Select is more of an edit mode. When it is chosen and active, you will see a list of tools available in the Selected section of the Tool Panel, and they will change depending on which sub-object mode you happen to be in, whether you're in Edges, faces or vertices. Let's go to edges mode. You can assign hotkeys if you are used to working with hotkeys to switch between sub-object modes in your main 3D application. To do that, you would hover over any one of these options and then hit the end key on your keyboard. That's E-N-D. That will allow you to make the hotkey assignment you are most familiar with. What I want to do now is select a few edge loops and rotate them so they flow with those large skin folds. I can left mouse click on any edge to select it and continue clicking on multiple edges to multi-select. However, I can hold down the shift key, then click to select an entire edge loop. With the selection made, we now want to use the transform tool. I could scroll down in the tool panel and click on it here. I can also access it more quickly, obviously with a hotkey or I can right mouse click in order to bring up a quick context sensitive menu. I'll go ahead and click on the icon and now I am presented with a gizmo with different transform mode widgets. These on the ends are rotation widgets. They're color coded to indicate what axis they are being transformed along. You can scale along a single axis. You also have the scale along two axes widget. When you move your cursor toward the middle, you have this little circle and that allows you to move in screen space. Since we are in orthographic view, you could also use this like a two axis widget, if you will. You can also use a stem to move along a single axis. This outer ring allows you to rotate in screen space. These are all relatively self-explanatory. If you want to keep it more simplified to where you only see the relevant transform widgets, you can use the standard QWERTY hotkey combinations that are typical in major 3D applications like Maya and 3D Studio Max. If you want to restore the default where all widgets are visible, you can hit the Q key. So yeah, let's now rotate this edge loop. If I want, I can change the opacity of this low poly mesh. This will make the mesh more transparent so I can see the image reference details more clearly. I can also go to the image reference panel and adjust the visibility of the image reference plane through my object. By adjusting the inside opacity, I can make it more visible as well. When I'm done with my adjustments, I can click close guides. I'll select the next edge loop by shift clicking on it. 
and I'm going to check auto fit in local space so that each time I create a new selection and switch to the transform tool, it will automatically be oriented in local space and that will save me a little bit of time. I'll choose main axis and that will line it up in local space as well. Let's go ahead and rotate that. I can drag select outside the object to drop both the selection and the gizmo. Then shift click to select the next edge loop. We will rotate this one as well. I can also hit escape to drop the transform gizmo and then hit escape one more time to drop the selection. Yeah, so shift click, right click, transform. I will now click and drag the cube at the center, which is for global scaling. And I'll take a look at it. I'll scale that in just a bit. I'll hit escape one time to drop the gizmo and the second time to drop the selection. Then shift click on the next loop. This time I'll choose the transform tool through a 3D connection device. It takes a bit of manual setup, but it's well worth it because you can assign hotkeys to any one of these eight sections and name the macro commands accordingly in the process. This effectively allows a user to multiply the number of commands or tools they can access with a single button. For the sake of time, I'm going to speed up the playback while I do a bit of tweaking to the rest of the geometry. One thing you'll notice here is that you can drag select while your transform gizmo is active. This allows you to go ahead and make fast tweaks without having to drop the tool and then reactivate it later on. The little circle in the center of the gizmo will allow you to click and drag to move along two axes in screen space. Okay, let's say that we have finished doing all of our tweaking and we are now ready to create our first horn. We want to use the spine tool, but first it requires us to select some polygons because after all, it is a specialized polygon extrusion tool. So let's switch to faces mode and I will use freeform lasso to select these two polygons. There are a couple different things that I can do at this point. I could use a transform tool actually to do all of this. It has extrusion functionality built in and I will show that for the other horn. But for this first one, I want to use the spine tool. So I will right click here in order to create an end set. Then in the pop-up panel, I have the option to adjust the scaling of the inset. You could elect to inset them individually or as a group, which is the default action. The next thing I need to do is to shape the polygons to be more round or elliptical. I'll switch to a brush draw mode, as well as vertices sub object mode. I'll hit escape to drop that first selection. And I'm just going to select these vertices. We'll go back to the transform tool. Then I'm going to scale on this axis. And then I can select those as well. I can hit escape once to drop the gizmo and twice to drop the selection. All right, and then go back to faces mode. Select those four. And then we want to use our spine tool. It's going to use that selection. In this case, I want to modify by spline. It creates an initial spline. And I want to go back to my original camera shortcut. I can Alt, right mouse button, click and drag to zoom. I can middle mouse button, click and drag to pan the viewport camera. The next important note about the spine tool is that each point represents newly extruded faces. If we hover our cursor over a point, we can use the mouse wheel to scale those faces. So scrolling down on the mouse wheel will decrease the scale. Scrolling up will increase it. If you are using a Wacom tablet, it's not to worry. You can always use the touch ring the same way you might want to scale your brush size, either in 3D Coat or in Photoshop. When moving the point, it works in screen space, so that means it will always move perpendicular to the camera. Since we are in orthographic view, we know that it's constrained along two specific axes. I can use my bracket keys just like I would in Photoshop to increase or decrease my brush size. So I'm going to double click to create a new point here. And again, I can scale using my mouse wheel or the touch ring on my Wacom tablet. 
You can see that it's added a new loop and that as I move the point, it also adjusts the geometry accordingly. I'll create another one here. Double tap. So let's rotate about the model to take a look at our newly created horn. I'll step out in select mode and we will pick up in the next video looking at the transform tool and how you can use it to extrude on the fly much the same way, but still with a great deal of precision. So stay tuned and thank you for watching.